Have you ever wondered why online art tutorials are so flipping difficult <laughs> to replicate? It's just hard to get the colors right and get the same look as the artist got in the video. Like what is up with that? Well, we have some ideas for you to consider that hopefully will make you feel better. So let's get going on that. If you have struggled with online tutorials and trying to follow exactly what the person did, you've got their colors, you're using their paper, you've got the same brands of everything, and yet your artwork is not coming out the same, and you're beating yourself up for it, you're not alone. There's a lot of us out there that struggle with the very same thing. However, there's plenty of reasons why that happens, and it's not all your fault. So don't get hung up on it too much. There's things like the supplies, first off. Here I'm using Prismacolor pencils on Nina cardstock. If you did this on Stonehenge, you're going to get a very different result because a different amount of the pigment stays on the paper than it does when it's on Nina. So there's different kinds of supply things that are an issue. Or if you substitute another brand of pencil, even if the colors are really close, you might not get the same kind of result. And it's just because the person has put the colors down in different order. They've used different pressure with their hand when they were applying the pencil. They've layered it in repeated different ways. They, there's all different kinds of things that can cause their artwork to come out different than yours. And it doesn't mean you're a failure because you have not been able to do what they said. These drawings that I'm showing you in just a few minutes took me a couple of hours to get all the content done for this video. I'm not going to sit here for hours and show you every step of everything. And that's the way most tutorials are. They show you the important bits and they explain as best they can what they're doing. What I'm trying here is to show you that I'm using the same three pencils and I'm going to ach achieve three different skin tones in colored pencil using three pencils, just the same ones. I'm not going to change them out. I'm changing the amount of the pigment that goes on the paper, sometimes by using heavier pressure, sometimes by just applying it to more areas. And I'm getting a very different skin tone result. And yes, you're not crazy. I am using purple. If you're new to my channel, and I know there's a lot of you that are new, so welcome. Glad you're here. I use purples all the time when I'm shading skin tones. Why do I do that? Because purple is opposite of all of the orangey brown kinds of colors that are on the color wheel. And those are the, the colors in the skin tones. So I'm using the complement of them. Just go across the color wheel to find all the purples and blue violets. Blue violets tend to work a little better than red violets because then the skin doesn't get too pink but it creates a really different kind of a look rather than just using browns to shade skin tones. But I'm using different amounts to get different types of skin. You can see I've got very different little girls here. They're all very different, but they're using the same three colored pencils for the skin. And the large drawing there is on my Patreon page if you wanna watch that happen. Next, let's do the same thing, the same exercise in Copic markers because the same principles apply. I can use the same colors in three different drawings, three different colorings, and just use them in different amounts to get a very different look. And it's not only in the amount that's used on the drawing itself, there's also the color around it. The color around everything affects how it looks. There might be a green background on the one that you saw in the tutorial and you chose to make it a pink background, but that's going to change what the skin tone looks like because it's got all that pink around it. It's just got a different color. So you may need to do some adjusting to your artwork. So my, my whole goal in this is to just help you to calm down about beating yourself up. Cause I get a lot of people who say, boy, I just wish I could do it like you. It's magic when you do it. No, it's not magic when I do it. I do it differently than you do it. And your magic is just different than my magic. 
We all have our own type of magic. And I want to encourage you to just keep working at it and just keep learning because the more you practice, the better you're going to get. You're going to develop your own style, your own sense of color. You may decide purples are crazy. Like why would Sandy do all this purple stuff? I think it looks terrible. So you don't use it. Use something else. You need to develop your own style as well, but this is what I do. You can see in this center one, I used a lot more purple and I put it down first instead of putting it down after the base color. So the order can often make a really big difference in the skin tone just because you're, you're covering one color with another and one is eating away at the other and lifting color out. Tons of things like that. Watercolor is like a whole other game in and of itself because then you're talking about mixing pigment and water to certain consistencies. And that's like, that's a subject for a whole different video <laughs> than this one. But I hope that this has been helpful to see that the same three colors can give you a really, really different look. And it really is only the amount of the color that's used on the paper and the, sometimes the order, but I've got three completely different skin tones. And again, the larger drawing of this one is over on Patreon for those who wish to support my art in that way. Now, there's another way you can support my art and get some tutorials for yourself. And that is with the new app that just launched. I'm so excited about it. And it's called Art Venture. And you might find it in your app store under one word Art Venture, or it might be two words, hard to tell, but you'll recognize it when you get to my logo. Once you download it, you'll see the logo there. You'll see me drawing a rose in colored pencil. And then there's two buttons at the bottom. I know it only looks like one button, but the other button, I don't know why it doesn't have color on it, but it doesn't. But there's a sign up button as well as a login button. So if you are getting there for the first time, then you'll need to sign up and just create a password for yourself so that you can access things. When you get in, you'll be dumped onto the learn page. You have three icons at the bottom. And on the learn page is the two classes that are currently available. Eventually I'm gonna have more in there, but one is free and one is not. But let's look at the free one first, your art venture. And you'll notice right away that the lock buttons are there. There's a little locked icon, so you need to upgrade. And I know it's free, why should you upgrade? It's just their way of getting you to register for it. And on the page it takes you to, it should be uh, clicked onto the free class there. So make sure it's clicked onto that and then in get instant access. Now you might get sent through a loop in your app store or something to, to click something else. But then when you get back, you can go see all of the lessons. Well, you can see some of the lessons. This one in particular is a free class, but Every couple of days after you register is when each of the other lessons becomes available. So you'll have to wait for the second one once you finish the first. Tiny tutorials. This is the reason why I created this app in the first place is to have a place to put all of these that I keep putting on social media. Again, it's locked. So you need to upgrade in order to be able to see them. And it should have, like this one does, the button uh, for that one should be clicked. It says $2.99 a year. What a bargain to get that kind of content. And it's going to be added to ongoing as long as I keep making these tiny tutorials. And there are sections for each medium. And within those sections, you see now they're open since the class was quote unquote purchased for $2.99. And in the drawing section, there's a lot more than there are in the other sections. The reason is there might be a Copic piece of artwork in here or a watercolor piece of artwork, but it applies to every medium. So here's an example with drawing elf hats. If you want to learn how to draw elf hats on a bunny stamp, then this tutorial will help you to do that. I've got some color ideas in there for it. There's one for how to draw a turkey. So when Thanksgiving comes, get the kids and teach them how to draw a turkey when you get done with any of these, you hit the complete button and then you'll know which ones you've already viewed. And it will take you to the next one, how to draw a rosebud. And those tutorials you can do in any medium. You don't have to be doing like drawing all the time. There is a crafter one at the end of the list and it has three sections. The others have two. 
And this one has three sections. There's lots of fun in the how to's on doing masking and other fun stuff. At the bottom is one called the card maker decision wheel, which was a tiny tutorial I did a while back. And the plan is to take each one of these choices that we make when we're creating a card and just start figuring out how to do a tiny tutorial around each one of them. But you could go to this page and then just randomly pick one of these and, and use that for the focus of your card. I have done a couple of these blowouts of individual decisions, and this one is on design. And it'll give you some examples on different ways you can apply design to the card that you're making and maybe try something new and different that you haven't normally tried before. So that is the Tiny Tutorials class. Another thing you'll notice is that now you should have a community tab because until you register for these classes, you don't get the community tab, it won't show up. So once you tap it, you will see some posts in there and I've done some sections and then you can put content underneath of them. There's one where we just talk about color. Just go post a picture of the colorful things that are on your desk. What does your storage look like? That sort of thing. Not like massive numbers of pictures, just show one. So we can just get inspired by seeing each other's workspace. There's a introduce yourself. There's one that has to do with the first lesson that you'll get in the free class, et cetera. And then there's a Q&A. So if you have questions for me, you can add them there. There is no direct replying in that. I'll, I'll reply in the next comments underneath. But if I have something to say to you individually, this is where they show up in the community tab. There's a messages section. So I can send you a direct message and uh, that sort of thing. So in the profile section, just so you know, you can add your picture and stuff, change your information there. And in the settings in the upper right corner, there's a place to log out if you're one of those who likes to log out of apps. I just leave myself logged in because I'm lazy. So there's that as well. So links to the app, both in um, the iOS store and the Google Play are in the doobly-doo down below. So check it out. And I will see you again on Friday when I have a special treat for you. So be sure to come back to my YouTube and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.